I'm Austin Heyman. Welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program produced by the Commission on Aging and devoted entirely to issues and interests of Montgomery County seniors. This month we will learn about an interesting program uniting young students and seniors to share their experiences. We'll talk about a spelling bee just for seniors and finish the show with some advice and information about fire safety. But first, the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, SHIP, provides help and information about Medicare supplements to Medicare and other managed care plans. And joining me to tell us more is Lita Blank, the Montgomery County Coordinator of the State Health Insurance Assistance Program. Well, welcome back to Seniors Thank Today. Thank you, Austin. Good so to be here. So it's busy time again. It's, it's October is going to be the month yes, for enrollment. Right? Absolutely. It's a very important time for seniors to really pay attention to their health insurance plans and to evaluate what they have, and we can help them to evaluate it and make the proper changes. Because there are going to be changes in the plans. Absolutely, yes. Um, so, of course, we have Part C and Part D. What's Part C? Part C is managed care. It's Medicare Advantage plans, which people um, assign the Medicare A, which is hospital and outpatient mm -hmm. services, to a managed care plan. Unfortunately, in Montgomery County, we don't have too many options, uh -huh. but there will be changes, and people who are now in managed care have to make decisions, and this has to be done by the 7th of December in order to be effective January 1st. So they have a little time to work on this. Not too much. Not too much. Not too much. And then the prescription drug That's program. Part D. Yeah. Part D, yes. That's very important changes because we pointed out uh, that people who stay in the same plan year after year could be really losing money or not getting the best benefit of what the federal government Part D plan is offering. How, why is that? Well, because there are, the drugs you take might have changed from year to year. The companies and what they're going to cover may change. change. Uh -huh. These are insurance companies offering prescription drug plans authorized by the state. And then there are income support programs that people don't know about to help people pay for these plans. So. What are the ki kinds of issues that one needs to think about? You sort of hinted at it, right. about the drug situation. Right. Well, are your drugs the same year after year? We have a worksheet that we send out. We ask people to tell us what drugs they're taking, the dosage and the quantity. We put this on the Medicare.gov website. We do an evaluation and compare what you had in 2014 to what's going to be available in 2015. Because it's changed. It's it, changed. Yeah. The companies change. Right. Insurance companies are in business yeah. to make money. Right. So the rates may change. Not only the premium, but the but co-pays the coverage, yeah, and what drugs they're going to cover. Right. So people need to change. And we send out written evaluations on what recommendations we have. We'll compare what you have this right. year, compare what's available. Now, you mentioned something about income support. Yeah. Where does that come Thank in? you. Yeah, there are very good income support programs, especially for prescription drugs. The state of Maryland has a prescription drug um, support program called uh, State, Health and state Prescription Drug Assistance Program. For people, a couple with income of $47,000 or less, and a single person, that would 35. That not, not including assets? Assets. Well, if it's on your income tax and your drawing, that's yeah, the way yeah. they do oh, it. But right. if that's what you're living on, the state of Maryland will pay towards all programs and the federal government, uh, state up to $40 a month towards the premium of any prescription drug plan out there. Wow. Plus, there's a gap. There's a limit on what the federal government... Well, they used to call government. the donut hole. It's the gap of the donut hole, and right. it's up just under $3,000 this year of expenses. Oh, wow. That's a lot. No, it's not. No? I'll explain it in a minute. But then the state of Maryland, which only certain companies will pay 
towards the cost of the drugs when people are in the gap. The gap, the $3,000, includes what the prescription drug plan you buy the drug from pays the manufacturer plus your copay. So let's That's take cool. Lipitor. If they buy it for $80 from the manufacturer and your copay is $20, that's $100 a month deducted from your allowance. So you could see with four or five drugs, you're going to get in that gap very quickly. Well, that's a, that's a development that people need to focus on. That's a state assistance program yes. mostly. Yeah. Yes, with now, only certain companies. With only certain companies. Now, um, uh, you, you, your, your office does some workshops that, 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 to provide information. Oh, yes. Tell, how, how do we find out more? You can call us. What's, yeah. your, what's your phone number? 301-590-2819. You can call us. If you want the worksheet, just leave your address, name and address. Can we'll be mail out can, the worksheet. Or it could be emailed, too? No. No, just no, make email. because it doesn't email correctly uh, with the drugs. We I want see. to make sure there's two sides to this. People get it. But also one of our big outreach is to people turning 65, entering the Medicare program. So we do several outreach programs a month, two-hour seminars where we go through everything you need to know about Medicare initially. Uh, where, where do you do those? Uh, libraries. Mostly li libraries, libraries, some senior uh. centers, yeah. So they can find out by calling your Absolutely. office as to when the next one and where, the, where they, where they are. Three. We do two or three, and we do them at night because oh. we encourage family members to attend also. Uh, of course, nationally, they say that what, there are 10,000 people turning 65 around the country, so we got a, a bunch here in Montgomery County. 10,000 in 2014 turned 65. Yeah, we yeah. don't have the number yet for 2015. Right. But so I mean, that, that means there will be all, a fair it, number in Montgomery County. 10,000. Oh, 10,000 10, in Montgomery? 10,000 in Montgomery oh, County alone. Oh, in 2014. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So we outreach to those people. Oh. Even if they're working, they still have to make some decisions. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, I, I can see that uh, we we all need some help with this because it, is, right. it isn't so easy. And it's, it's great here that, to help. that you're there to help. We have a great group of volunteers who work with people. And um, we're out to help. And we want to encourage everybody to, if it's not you, the families, to encourage their loved ones, caregivers, to evaluate what they have. We'll teach them how to do it if they want to learn how. Terrific. Well, thanks yeah. for coming in again, Lita. Thank you, Austin. I know you have a big job. Thank you so much. When we return, we'll talk about mentoring and other opportunities for seniors. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. If it wasn't for his doctor, he wouldn't be here. If it weren't for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, he wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the phone call, we wouldn't have been there. If I didn't call, I don't know where we would be. Montgomery County emergency responders are there when you need help at no cost to you. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. So if you have an emergency, call us. We're, We're there, there for you. you. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to Seniors Today. Interagents programs are designed to help create a more age-integrated community by promoting improved communication and understanding for older adults and youth. And joining me to talk about Interagents programs are Tricia Wilson, the Assistant Director of Interagents, and Marty Severe, one of its volunteers. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Uh, I guess in the interest of full disclosure, I should tell our viewers that I was the founder of Interages 30 years ago, That's and right. now it's part of the Jewish Council for the Aging. That's right. But tell us now what are some of the programs that you have. 
Yeah, well, we still have a lot of the programs that began when you started InterAges uh, almost 30 years ago. Um, the biggest programs that we have, the first is Grand Readers. That's our uh, second grade reading program. So all of those children work one-on-one -on -one with a, an InterAges volunteer um, each week for about an hour. And the goal is really to get them reading on grade level by the end of the school year. So important. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Second, second grade is a critical year right, right before they leap into third grade and things right. kind of ratchet up a notch. Um, the other big program is Intergenerational Bridges, and that's our mentoring program that Marty is in. We have about 65, 70 volunteers. Wow, and, that's uh, grown. It has grown. Uh, yeah, we have actually expanded this year. We've uh, added another site. We're bringing it to Gaithersburg High School this year. So that's a program. I think we're celebrating our 28th year maybe yeah. in the schools. Right, and right. Um, it's all for kids in ESOL, or English for Speakers of Other Languages. So Marty, what is it that you do with this Bridges program? Okay, I'm a mentor. Uh, I'm going on my fourth year and uh, really enjoying it. Uh, mentoring is uh, uh, coaching, being a soundboard, being an advisor, whatever. I, I think most importantly it's being a friend and uh, a friend in a one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, with, uh, with a student. And uh, I think it's uh, extremely important in uh, building the kid's uh, self-confidence and uh, uh, and especially uh, being new to the English language and being n new to the United States. So you're working with middle school kids? Yes, and, yes, sixth and, to eighth grade. And how, you said four years, how many uh, children it's, have you it's, worked it's with? It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, yeah. so this is actually uh, going to be my, uh, my fourth year doing it. We do one-on-one, -on -one. I've had one child for one year and one child for two years. Where were they from? Uh, Sri Lanka and Senegal. Did, uh, I was just curious, did, what did you learn from this? <laughs> I learned a lot. Uh, it, it's amazing. Uh, we're, you're basically, any, anyone you would talk to would have a totally different experience or a different spin on it. Uh, I get a lot of learning from the, the cultures uh, of the various countries, uh, uh, the foods, the, um, uh, just the excitement on uh, the family traditions and things like that. Uh, Patricia, mm -hmm. what, what do the kids say about this, these, this program or, or, or the other programs? What kind of feedback do you get? Yeah, we get great feedback. Um, you know, the, the students at the elementary school level, obviously they're still, um, you know, excited and enthusiastic about being in school. And uh, children, we just had training the other day. We were talking with the volunteers and saying kids who don't participate in the Grand Readers program, um, sometimes when a student is heading off to go with their volunteer, um, you know, the other kids in the class who weren't selected are saying, well, I want to go, yeah. I want to go. So, um, you know, I think they see it as a special opportunity. It's that nice one-on-one -on -one that mm -hmm. is kind of rare these days in school. So it's um, a great connection. Awesome. I, I, I see this this age group as they're, they're sponges, okay? <laughs> they're engagingly uh, innocent, yeah. they're enthusiastic, they're energetic, they want to learn. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's beautiful experiencing it. Um, you have some new programs, though. Uh, you mentioned Grand Readers and Bridges, but mm -hmm. you also, and, and, and the, the, I went, one of the dialogues, dialogues still, that's uh -huh. a discussion we program. We still have dialogues, uh, yep, and we're expanding that one as well. Mm -hmm. So dialogues is um, a shorter program. Typically, our other ones run the length of the school year, so you usually start in October and you go each week through May. Um, but dialogues is a usually six to eight week discussion group, and it's for high school students. So we bring senior volunteers in for small group discussion circles. Um, but the new programs you mentioned, we do have one uh, we piloted last year. It's called Words of Wisdom. And we're bringing um, students in high school into senior living facilities. Last year they went to Asbury Methodist Village and they were interviewing um, veterans. Oh, so, that sounds interesting. yeah, capturing That's, kind of yeah. their life story and, um, you know, really creating something for them that they could pass down to their families. And then they were. Um, documenting it as well and keeping it at the school library so it could be a resource for all the teachers and students there. So I bet you got feedback from the students on that one. We did, yeah. We had a great quote. We actually put our program report together and um, one of the students was saying, you know, after interviewing the veterans and mm -hmm. hearing their stories, he realized life is short. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's important to kind of live each day and, mm -hmm. and appreciate what you have and live wow. life to the fullest was wow. his takeaway. So That's it was definitely cool. impactful. Yeah. So if people want to get more information uh, about Interage's programs, mm -hmm. give, give us a phone number or a website or, sure, bo or both. Sure, I'll give you both, <laughs> yes. So they can always call. It's 301-949-3551. 
Um, that's the main interagist number, and they'll get to talk to me. I answer the phone. Um, and then the website is www.interagesmd.org. So um, are you, you are recruiting for these, some of these programs? We still? are always recruiting, yes. Yeah. What I say, you know, we really never have too many volunteers. Um, the more volunteers we can engage, the more students we can serve, and it's always our goal to serve more kids in need. And the time commitment, as you say, varies from... It does. It's primarily during the school day, although mm -hmm. the mentoring program is immediately after school. Um, so, you know, either during the school day, kind of that 10 to 11 hour, or immediately after school, kind of 3 to 4. Mm -hmm. um, but typically just about an hour a week for the length of the school year. We give, you know, training. We have staff who's on site with materials. So we kind of set it up all nice for you. You just have mm -hmm. to show up with your good attitude. Mm -hmm. Marty, what led you to, to want to do this? <laughs> Probably the, uh, the challenge of something new. I had a 35-year uh, federal career in healthcare management. I worked in retail management prior to that. This was an opportunity to learn something new, the public school education. So uh, I found it uh, that fit the, uh, the, the gap, and interagencies has been, uh, been, been uh, marvelous in that regard, finding it very uh, energizing and very challenging. It's been a wonderful experience. Sounds like a win-win. <laughs> 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 the, the students have benefited, and so have you. Uh, right. Well, good luck with the recruiting. Uh, and uh, I, I just was very excited. I read your annual report that just <laughs> came out. I was really impressed with all the new, new uh, avenues that you've gone on. And, uh, just terrific. Thanks for coming in today. Thank Thanks for you. having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. When we come back, if you thought spelling bees were just for young students in elementary school, then think again. We'll tell you more when we come back, so please stay with us. We'll be right back. back to Seniors Today. Friends of the Library of Montgomery County was founded in 1982 and incorporated as a nonprofit organization to strengthen, promote, support, and advocate for the public library system here in Montgomery County. Two years ago, they organized spelling bees for seniors, and I had the good fortune to be a MC for one of these events. Well, the time is coming for another contest, and joining me to tell us more is Larry Matthews, a member of the Board of Trustees for Friends of the Library. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Thank you. Are you a good speller? Uh, not so good, actually. I was, uh, uh, I was a little uh, intimidated by that. Uh, but you're a good, you have the title of enunciator. Tell I'm the enunciator. What is an enunciator? Right. Well, at first off, it means that I can't spell. That's why I'm the enunciator. <laughs> Uh, that's the person who says, your next word is, uh, and then you kind of uh, walk people through. But these are fun events. They are fundraisers for Friends of the Library, Montgomery County. We, this is our fifth one that's coming up on November the 8th at the New Library in Olney. Great. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. It's 55 and older. We call them uh, seasoned spellers in addition to uh, uh -huh. senior spellers. And they're great fun. As you know, the one we had in Gaithersburg uh, in the spring, we had a, maybe about 25. Yeah, it was very impressive there. turnout there, yeah. People in their 90s. I mean, right, these people right. can spell. Right, right. And uh, we work with some of the senior centers, some of the senior facilities in Montgomery County, and uh, they had some people who uh, showed up from, from yeah. their centers, and, uh, and, and their supporters turned up sometimes in wheelchairs and walkers, but they had pom-poms. Yeah, there were about 70 people, at least, in the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we had a little cheering groups. Uh, uh -huh. You know, it's great fun. It's a fundraiser. It's $25. Uh -huh. That's the, uh, the registration fee, and right. it, it all goes to Friends of the Library and our programs there. And in case, uh, you know, somebody's interested, uh, maybe they don't have $25, we encourage people to seek out sponsors. Uh -huh. 
So that somebody can pay sure. you know your twenty five dollars, but it's a gr it's a great event and it's great yeah. fun. So how do you register? Or how do you find out about this? Is there a well, we have a, oh, we have a website. So website. Friends of the Library of Montgomery County. The website is f o l m c dot org. Uh -huh. F o l m c dot org. There is a registration uh, form and things like that uh, there, and we have a phone number of course, and that's two four zero. Seven 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 zero zero two zero. So, uh, tell us a little bit about how uh, how this works. Uh, uh, spelling. I, I I I you know saw the last one, but not everybody knows the format. Well, it's 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 based on the national spelling bee. Uh -huh. So if you've seen these little you know uh -huh. twelve year olds spell uh -huh. these uh, uh -huh. impossible uh -huh. words, it's kind of like that. Uh -huh. uh, we have uh, people uh, numbered. Uh -huh. So you start to one to maybe twenty five or something uh -huh. like that. We'll call them number uh -huh. one. We'll, uh -huh. we'll approach the podium, uh -huh. and I, as the enunciator, will say, and you know, there's a word. You uh -huh. know, our uh -huh. first round. Your word is eligible. Uh -huh. Your word is eligible, and then they can ask, uh, well, uh, what part of speech is that? We'll say eligible is an adjective, uh -huh. and they can ask me what is the origin, and we'll say, well, it's Middle English from Late Latin. Uh -huh. What is the definition? Able to be chosen for something, able to do or receive something, alternate definition, suitable or desirable for marriage, uh. and use it as an example, I'd like to join, but I'm not eligible uh -huh. yet. So the, the, And the words gradually get harder. They do, yeah. That's uh. a beginner word right uh. there. And then an intermediate word would be something like glutinous, uh -huh. uh, an adjective, Latin, like glue. And maybe one of the more difficult words would be mendacious. Right, yeah. And mendacious is an adjective from Latin. It means dishonest, given to lying. I would be mendacious to say I'm a good speller. All right. right. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I mean, I, I, I thought people enjoyed it uh, very much. And, and I guess there's a, there's a prize at the end. There is, a grand, a grand prize. Uh, we've given out uh, e-readers, yeah. uh, 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 Barnes & Noble gift certificates, Things like that, and there'll be a grand prize on November the eighth at the uh, Alney Library. It's a new library. It's wonderful. It's eleven o'clock in the morning. Sounds great, and uh, I bet you'll have more than twenty this time. I a, hope so. Uh, the, well, as a certain, I mean, we couldn't have one hundred and fifty. No, it'd it would be too many. We want to go. Yeah, uh, yeah I actually went on for I don't know, it was like an hour and a half or something. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we we encourage everybody to to show up, support senior spellers. And if you can, uh, you know, and support the friends of a library too. Yes, I'm I'm really impressed with all the things that the friends of a library does, and uh, you're one of their trustees. So uh, that's right. Uh, it's great. It's a great organization. So thanks for coming in. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. When we return, we'll conclude today's show with some very important fire safety tips. So please don't go away. We'll be right back. So. I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, Nelly containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Welcome back to Seniors Today. October is Fire Prevention Month, and one of the most vulnerable groups of people with regard to fire safety is seniors. Joining me to talk about this extremely important issue is Jim Resnick, the Senior Citizen Fire Safety Education and Outreach Service Coordinator for the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Thank you, Austin. Thanks for uh, having nice me. Nice to have you here. <clears throat> well, 
I know that fire safety has been a concerning concern in the county for years. And in fact, I think in 2008 there was a task force at work and made recommendations. Where do we stand today? Well, that task force was formed because we were suddenly seeing a rise in the number of fires at homes of seniors. We were seeing a spike in senior deaths. And unfortunately, we still are seeing those numbers still, still, up. Still. Yep. Uh, and it has to do with our aging uh, population. We've called it a senior tsunami, and we're not quite at the peak of that uh, planned senior tsunami yet, but it is out there. And with that comes a lot of issues with people aging in place, with people not being able to maintain the systems, the fire, alarm, the fire uh, and smoke alarm systems. Uh, within their homes and not being able to get out well. And that's what we're trying to emphasize are, in our training now. I was going to ask you, what, what do you see as the other principal causes for fire, particularly with regard to seniors? Yeah, uh, and it's a national trend and we see the same numbers here. Uh, the number one cause of fires in Montgomery County, especially those involving seniors, is cooking, cooking. unattended cooking. Uh, leaving, or leaving the stove on or something. Leaving the stove on or unfortunately we've also had a number of uh, unfortunate incidents where seniors have died as a result of leaning over a hot stove with burners mm. on and they're wearing loose fitting clothing. Oh, oh, oh. So being careful not just to attend mm. the food mm -hmm. but also what are you wearing? What do you have hanging around your neck? And could that be something which could lead to a fire? Now the department is, is is doing a lot of work. I see you have some uh, smoke detectors. I, I I I think the department is installing, is helping people. Yeah. We, now we prefer people to buy their own smoke oh. detectors. The county has a limited budget, and our mm. ability to put in smoke detectors in everyone's home is certainly mm. quite limited. Um, this is an older style smoke detector that you or I might have had in our mm -hmm. home in the past, and this smoke detector actually has a battery in it. Mm. The problem with this battery is it was never hooked up. And this type of smoke detector is one of our problems, that people either aren't setting the uh, batteries up correctly, or when the battery dies after about six months or so, they're not changing out the battery. Um, and what we're trying to do now is to get folks to use these 10-year smoke detectors. In my right hand is one of the 10-year smoke detectors, which at first glance looks very, very similar to the other smoke detector. This one, though, if you see at the bottom here, has that nine volt battery. This Which one lasts a brief time period, yeah. Well, and the idea is we don't want to have people, especially seniors, getting up on ladders yeah. or chairs yeah. or tables or doing Changing things dangerously. Changing every six months or a year. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. so the idea is if we can put in a device that will last for 10 years, now we still want people to check it by pushing the button about once a month, or as I like to say, if you burn a little toast, that's okay, you just tested your smoke detector. Right. Well, um, so you are you are making presentations to uh, getting the word out to groups as well. So you're, is there a phone number for you or yes, the sir. department? Yes, sir. Two four zero seven 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 two four three zero. That rings at my desk. You can leave a message if I'm not there, and we either myself or one of our very well trained professionals can come out and make a presentation to any kind of a group on not only fire prevention but injury prevention too within the home. Now I see you have also uh, something that I'm familiar with, the file of life, but not, not everybody knows about that. This file of life is an incredible idea and it's something that we're really trying to push out there, not just for seniors, but for just about everybody. Um, this, will, this is magnetic on the back, it'll attach to someone's refrigerator and that way we know we can go to the kitchen and on the outside of the refrigerator we can get all the medical information that we need. There's a sheet in here which the people can fill out with a family member, with a friend, with someone who can help them if they need. It includes medications, allergies, emergency contacts and the like. Mm -hmm. And we ask that people fill these out in pencil so they can continually update it's it. It's so important. And if the rescue squad comes, then they, they have it. They have exactly. the information right there. Because sometimes a person is forgetful or they have a medical condition where they can't tell us that vital information. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. Uh, I'm so glad you could come in, and, and uh, let's hope that Fire Prevention Month means that the, the numbers will go down this year. Thank you, and it's not just Fire Prevention Month for us. It's all year Fire long. Prevention Year. Thanks for coming Certainly. in. Certainly. Well, that's it for this month's Seniors Today. Don't forget that you can access a great deal of information about county services for seniors by going to the Montgomery County Senior website at www.montgomerycountymd.gov forward slash seniors or call the Senior Resource Line 
at 240-777-3000. And as always, thank you for watching Seniors Today.